Welcome back, this is Dr. Jin Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we're gonna to talk about the loss of smell and taste following COVID-19. I get this question a lot. How do we improve smell and taste after you get COVID? So we're gonna go ahead and address this today. We're gonna to talk about some of the mechanisms, uh, what's in the research. So let's get right into it. SARS-CoV-2 impacts sustentacular cells of the nasal epithelium, reducing the thickness of the epithelium. The olfactory epithelium is also impacted by the immune cells trying to kill off the virus. Two, the secondary mechanism is respiratory epithelium can replace the olfactory epithelium following an acute inflammatory response. So if after the inflammation, some of the respiratory uh, epithelium will migrate into the nasal or olfactory epithelium, changing its function, right? So that's uh, mechanism number two. Mechanism number three, there's a vascular impact, most likely vasoconstriction, or basically narrowing of the small vessels into the nasal cavity, uh, decreasing the ability to smell. Number four, inflammation. There's an increase in what we call interleukin-6, which is an inflammatory cytokine, and there's been correlation as to increased IL-6 and loss of smell. So these are the four mechanisms that are uh, currently available as to why you might lose the sense of smell. Why is the sense of smell and taste so important? Because it impacts appetite. So it'll decrease appetite and it will promote weight loss. Now for some, they're like, oh, that's great, we can lose weight. But there are some uh, age population where if they lose more weight, it's gonna be a problem. So in the elderly population, especially, it's important that they uh, get their appetite back. Number two, it also impacts the, uh, the pleasure centers of the brain. So some people will actually develop depression as a result of not having the pleasure of eating. So eating itself impacts happiness for a lot of people, and depression is a uh, uh, end result if you can't smell and taste. Okay, so on this board, I have a lot written down. So we're gonna take it in sections and in colors, and I'll also write all of this down in the description below, so you can read it and take your time going through it. So I'll step back and you can look at the uh, board right here and I'm going to explain some of the things that I think is going on so smell is cranial nerve number one which is the olfactory nerve taste is cranial nerve um, seven nine and ten so seven the facial nerve innervates the anterior two-thirds of your tongue okay where your taste buds are right Cranial nerve number nine, the glossopharyngeal nerve, innervates the posterior one-third of your tongue. And cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, uh, innervates the epiglottis region of, the, of your throat, okay? So these cranial nerves are very important. Why? Because without proper stimulation of those nerve centers or nerves, or the cranial nerves, it will decrease your immune response in the GI tract it will decrease your hydrochloric acid production in your stomach and your digestive enzymes. So your digestion will slow down. Two, it will decrease GI motility because cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve, is responsible for a lot of the digestive processes and the sympathetic parasympathetic response. So it has a big impact here. As a result of this, you're going to have bloating, more constipation, and increased food sensitivities in some people, leading to things like SIBO, right, and overgrowth issue with uh, candida and so forth. So this is very important in terms of overall gut function. Now, in terms of treating patients who have loss of smell, we have to do some olfactory retraining. So you can use things like lemon, eucalyptus, clove, peppermint, coffee, anise, peanut butter, right? And you wanna smell these uh, scents um, up to like a minute, not each, but total, 
one minute three times a day. So every, you know, three or four hours, you're gonna take out these smells and you're going to smell it for a minute. So different smells, try to identify it and try to stimulate the olfactory nerve. Number two, taste retraining. You have to be able to do some ta uh, ta tasting. So you can use things like that are sour and bitter, lemons. Uh, I think there was uh, a trend uh, where people were taking oranges and they were kind of grilling them, getting that charred smell and taste along with the, the lemony taste or the uh, orange taste and trying to stimulate the taste buds. Number four, deep diaphragmatic breathing. This is about circulation, which would improve circulation uh, to all the brain areas. Number four, you have to completely chew. Also, singing is also very important because it stimulates cranial num number five, cranial nerve number five, seven, nine, and 10. So being able to chew and sing out loud will stimulate the nervous system. Okay, we talked about different training methods here, uh, things to do. Now, supplements. So in order to improve smell and taste, we have to reduce the inflammation. Things like curcumin and baclin will decrease IL-6. We said increase IL-6 will uh, has a correlation to loss of smell and taste. So we want to decrease IL-6. You want to inhibit fibrosis or scarring, basically. You can use glutathione, which will decrease reactive oxygen species and uh, speed up the epithelial uh, repair process. So you can use these supplements here. You have to support the vasculature because if you have vasoconstriction, you're not getting enough blood flow and you're not going to get healing. So you can use vimpositin, ginkgo, and butcher's broom to in, uh, support the vasculature and vasodilation to the area, improving the healing process. Another one here, restore mucosal integrity, right? We said there's damage to the mucosa. You can use glutamine, NAC, perilla, and astragalus to decrease the Th2 dominance, or basically immune dominance, okay? And then you also have to improve nerve function you want lion's mane mushroom, that which will help improve brain function. And you can also use melatonin to help improve or increase brain-derived neurotropic factors. Basically enhances the ability to, to heal some. So this all in combination should be able to restore uh, a lot of patients who have loss of smell and taste. Uh, it's still evolving because there's a lot of people who still can't smell and taste properly. Uh, they may get some improvement, but this is a very comprehensive approach in, to, in terms of how to improve smell and taste post-COVID-19. All right, my name is Dr. Jin Sung. We're at Clinical Excellence Meets Excellent Results, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.